that on Long Island in New York, where we've collected almost 600 teeth, the trends in childhood cancer and the trends in strontium-90 are the same. When one goes up, the other goes up. When one goes down, the other goes down. This is quite strong evidence that there is, in fact, a cause and effect linkage between the two. The Tooth Fairy Project is a project that is, um, has been uh, conducted by the Radiation Public Health Project, which is an independent uh, group of scientists and researchers, um, where they are collecting baby teeth from various parts of the country and measuring strontium-90 in the baby teeth. And we're finding now strontium-90 levels in the baby teeth of children living near nuclear facilities that are as high as they were during above-the-ground testing in the 1950s. And strontium-90 only comes from nuclear explosions and um, nuclear power plants. And the above-the-ground testing ended in 1963. So the increase that we're seeing in strontium-90 in baby teeth in children living near nuclear reactors can only be coming from the reactors themselves. Some people, when they look at the Yucca Mountains fiasco, they say, well, that's Nevada. That's the desert. What does it mean for me, numero uno? Well, what it means for us is that nuclear waste will be shipped right across our backyards. That we have about 100 commercial nuclear sites in the country. We have a number of nuclear weapons dump handling many, many millions of gallons of low and high level waste. That waste has to be shipped across our interstate. It has to be hauled over the water and then hauled over the interstate to Yucca Mountains. Now, there have been a number of accidents with regards to the shipment of nuclear waste. In one famous accident in Colorado, there was a shipment of yellow cake nuclear ore that overturned, split open, releasing all this uranium ore in the middle of a highway. But it wasn't cleaned up for many days because the federal authorities and the state authorities were bickering with each other as to who had responsibility for the cleanup. Meanwhile, all this nuclear waste was, was essentially being blown into people's backyards. So there have been a number of accidents with regards to the day-to-day -day shipments of nuclear waste. And of course, if the Yucca Mountains is fully operational, it means that our interstates and our highway systems and our waterways will be used to transport literally tens of tons of this material right past our backyards. Geologists tell us that you do not know the stability of the area for the next 10,000 years. There could be earthquakes there. In fact, small tremors are recorded in the area. There could be another ice age in 10,000 years. There could be all sorts of problems with the geologic stability of an area because of the fact that geology is not a predictive science. Geology is a retroactive science looking at the past. Also, we now know that the Yucca Mountain site itself may not be stable. It turns out that heat is generated by all this nuclear waste. Heat causes salt and rock to expand. And we may even see a large expansion of the site over the next several thousand years as these nuclear waste barrels corrode, split apart, and the stability of the area itself cannot be guaranteed. That's why I'm saying that even today, 50 years after the dawn of the nuclear age, we still don't know where the hell to put the nuclear waste. As the cuff, which will be made of metal, rusts, over time, plutonium, which lasts for half a million years, is going to leach down through the crevices in the rock, and 10 pounds at some time will collect together, which is critical mass, blow the top off the mountain, and blow 77,000 tons of radioactive waste into the four winds of the United States of America. That estimate was worked out by a fellow a scientist at Los Alamos Labs, and all the scientists said, yeah, we hadn't thought of that. It would be like a ridiculous way to handle nuclear waste. There is a safe way. It's good housekeeping. We should put it in above-ground containers that are hardened against airplane attack. We should keep it under guns, gates, and guards, and we should be doing that all over the world in cooperation with the United Nations. And just watch it, account for it. We haven't even taken an accounting. As a matter of fact, there's a uh, civi civil society initiative to do a worldwide inventory of all the nuclear materials all over the world. And we're, we have a website and we're asking people to write in and talk about where the stuff is in their country because the governments of the world don't want to account for it. Realize that there are about two million pieces of 
nuclear materials that is, are licensed by the, the government. Every year, about 300 of them are lost. Think about that. 300 out of 2 million pieces of nuclear materials are lost every year, of which only half are recovered. In other words, every year we lose track of about 150 of our nuclear materials. And I would say that less than 3% of politicians are scientifically literate. And if they don't understand genetics and biology, the starters, let alone chemistry and physics and the like, they almost have no right to be politicians these days because it's science, unrestrained, unmitigated science, that is actually destroying the Earth. At the height of the Cold War, we criticized the Russians for allowing ideology to get in the way of real science. We criticized the Russian for forging documents, for, for exaggerating the effects of this or that. Now we realize that our own scientists were also, were also prisoners of ideology. In the name of a national security, we now know that American scientists were keeping double books on the GIs who were marched right up to the atomic bomb. We now know in the name of national security that radiation was released into metropolitan areas, into homes, and into the desert to calculate the effects of radiation as it dispersed through the American heartland. We now know that radiation, plutonium, x-rays were given to individuals, mainly convicts, mainly people with suffering from incurable diseases or African Americans. But without their permission, they were exposed to plutonium and x-rays in the name of national security. In other words, there was a Faustian bargain. Faust was the mythical figure who sold his soul to the devil for unlimited power. And I think that the American people are also realizing that they too sold their soul to the devil. Because now we have these nuclear power plants that are sitting ducks to any kind of terrorist attack. We're now saddled with hundreds of millions of tons of nuclear waste and we have no place to put this nuclear waste. We now have all these rotting nuclear facilities that are like open sores on the face of the earth that may cost up to a trillion dollars to clean up. Leftovers from the Cold War. That's the Faustian bargain. All the research that we have done and that people all over the world have done in the last few decades, that the greatest single environmental factor that has been ignored has been bomb fallout and nuclear radiation from permitted releases from nuclear accidents. And if we continue this emission from 100 nuclear plants in this country and affect the mental and physical ability of our children by having them born prematurely and having them born with low birth weight, then we are destroying the future of our nation. And in fact, all of the Northern Hemisphere of countries that want to continue to operate nuclear plants. It's happening in Russia, where the releases are even greater than they were in this country, and the regulations were not as good, and we are now seeing a decline in the life expectancy in Russia. And the only reason we are not having it in this country is because we're spending enormous amount of money on drugs and treatment, and an increasing amount of money is being drained from other resources into the healthcare area because we refuse to recognize how the small amounts of negligible radiation, according to the government, are multiplying the effects of chemicals in our environment.